Welcome everybody. This is the City of Palaka workshop of the Palaka Housing Authority. And we're calling this meeting to order. We can read the special call workshop notice, please, Ms. Grant. Thank you, Madam Mayor. To Commissioner Tanner McCaskill, Will Jones, Rufus Borm, and Justin Campbell, you hereby notify the special call workshop of the Black City Commission is hereby called for June 5th, 2023 at 3.30 at City Hall, 201 North 2nd Street, Black Street 2177. The purpose of the workshop is to discuss available city surplus real estate and Palaka Housing Authority properties for development of housing opportunities. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Sign Roberta M. Correa, Mayor of the City of Palaka. Thank you. Let's stand for the invitation. Pastor Mulberry. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and praise for your kindness towards us. Father, we thank you because you have blessed us to come together once again. We pray, God, that your hand will rest upon us and that your wisdom will be with us and that you will guide us in all endeavors. We need your help. We call upon you for help because you is our help. You woke us up and we thank you. Bless us now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Which of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Ms. Grant. Thanks. Commissioner Tammy McCaskill. Here. Commissioner Justin Campbell. Present. Commissioner Rufus Borum. Present. Commissioner Will Jones. Present. Madam Ro Mayor Robbie Correa. Present. All members present and accounted for. I know it's a workshop, but I'm going to say we have a forum because we do. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to open up the floor to public comments. Is there anybody here for public comments? Saying that we'll move to public comments. On to agenda items number one. Black Housing Authority and Positioning Plan. Um, we try to keep this at a 10 minute time frame and that's the Dr. Williams, I believe. Please remember to turn the mic on. So. I, well, I have a concern, and the reason I'm going to go ahead and put it out there the reason we workshop this was so that we would have ample enough time to discuss. So I'm in disagreement with the allotted amount of time because that's what we came to the workshop for is to be able to have. As much time needed. I'm in agreement with Commissioner Campbell that the reason that we put it in a to recommend it a workshop for me. Um, <clears throat> yes, I can address that. Um, so, Commissioner, you'll notice there's four items on your agenda. Uh, the fourth item, open discussion, uh, does not have a time allotment to it. Obviously, if you go over these 10 minutes, it was just an idea that the mayor and I had to kind of move you through the first three items as quickly as possible so that you had ample time to have open discussion. Um, but it's just a guideline. Okay. Yeah, it was only for presentation. Okay. It wasn't for discussion. Thank you for the clarification. Dr. Woods. Good afternoon, all. On behalf of the Palaka Housing Authority, as well as commissioners, and I am pleased to say, by virtue of Zoom, I have a quorum. Uh, I have two present here in attendance. That would be my chair, uh, Chairman Neshawad, and also Commissioner Bell in attendance. I have several team members present, two that are inside and one that is still outside. Uh, Humble Mayor, City Commission, Thank you uh, for affording us this opportunity to share with you, and thank you for your continued support and sustainability of affordable housing. Um, we have a couple of things that we want to get to prior to, uh, because this is a pretty short uh, presentation as it pertains to the repositioning piece. And it's something that we visited and revisited now going on five years, and uh, most of you can recall. As you know, the Housing Authority was created by virtue of a cooperation agreement. Uh, and as a result of that, part of that was payment in lieu of taxes, which is pilot. Uh, but along with that, you know, many cities and municipalities return a pilot to its local housing authority before the city. And the reason for that is to show that there is a working partnership 
And you know, even with that, the housing authority does more than housing. They also have an increased policing contract. The housing authority installed six license plate units as it is with police, the lack of police department. And most importantly, I think it's necessary that we are reminded that the housing authority, the lack of housing authority, is not housing of last resort. Okay, that is essential. Um, with that being said, we had a recent bill signed off by Governor DeSantis, Senate Bill 102. We recommend and strongly suggest that we take the time to read at least the opening statement and last statement uh, of the summary, uh, such that housing, citing this act as Live Local Act, and essentially it released the authority of local governments to adopt and maintain laws, ordinances, rules, uh, other measures that would have the effect of imposing controls on rents, providing an exemption from Havilland tax for land that meets certain criteria, authorizing local governments to adopt ordinances to provide an Havilland tax exemption for portions of property used to provide affordable housing meeting certain requirements, suspending for a specified period the general revenue fund source, a service charge on documentary stamp tax collections, authorizing the governor with the Florida Job Growth Grant Fund to approve state and local public infrastructure projects to facilitate the development of our construction of affordable housing. And right now that's appropriated to um, $711 million. So uh, with that being said, we'll want you to know that the Housing Authority has already made valiant efforts and we tried to bring staff uh, forward with regards to some of the efforts that we've made. And of course, we've conducted environmental reviews on agency-wide on all of our property. Uh, we've had a consultant come down, former HUD employee, uh, who's actually online now with Byron Consulting, uh, who basically conducted three frames that uh, things that frame an exercise of review for us. One was the goal is to preserve as many heart units as possible so that residents can live in dignity. Two, new construction is extremely expensive. Uh, likely, in his assessment, $300,000 to $350,000 per unit in hard costs. And thirdly, the agency has resources that it can contribute both to repositioning the existing 422 units, but also to developing, if feasible, the 62 fair cup units that are outstanding. And that 62 is a result of the 484 units that the housing authority is allowed to build to. Okay, so 484 minus 422 is 62. And that specifically came from the demo dispo of George Frank. Okay. Communities group June uh, this year will be conducting uh, performance for us and basically uh, site assessments with regards to what we can do with our property and what would be deemed to be feasible for us doing. And now we're going to the positioning and repositioning and for you to know that the author of one of the authors, one of the two authors of PHA repositioning is actually the, the individual that will be conducting these reviews for us and providing us with performance. So I think that's good to know. Reposition public housing is simply changing platforms and not changing the mission. Next. So essentially what it is a move towards is to be able to leverage our property, the valuation of our property, okay? Uh, therein lies our real resources. To be able to utilize that to go towards any other monies that we can procure and secure for either significant modernization efforts or to raise and redevelop. Initially, I must say from the onset, it was almost 50-50. The agency had been saying for about four and a half years that about 50% of our inventory was obsolete, all right, beyond improvements and unable to uh, make necessary improvements to be able to be competitive and market going forward. However, upon additional review and additional assessments, we believe that we can maintain and or retain much of that inventory, uh, if not upwards to 100%, certainly about 90 to 95%, we should be able to retain in our 
hold inventory, which will allow us and afford us an opportunity to utilize those resources towards significant modernization efforts, and that means from the infrastructure on. Okay. Next. As you see again, that we're leveraging, simply leveraging repositioning success to RAD and RAD, the acronym for that, as you see there, is Rental Assistance Demonstration. And that is one of a few tools that HUD has now in its toolbox for agencies to be able to further uh, sustain affordable housing. Utilize new program flexibility in Section 18 demo and dispo process, develop guidance on additional repositioning strategies. Okay. What do we mean by reposition? Facilitate the rehab or demolition and new construction of units by increasing access to financing to address capital needs. And that is significant because the vast majority of agencies nationwide, you know, has more than average 10 to 15 years of deferred maintenance. And if you can imagine what that cost would be uh, in a lump sum, it would be insurmountable. And so an effort to bring those needed repairs forward to simply change the ways and means we deliver the services that we deliver. So essentially, I, I'm commonly known for saying we're not changing the ways and means of travel. We're simply changing the vehicle that we're utilizing to travel. Okay. Will there still be public housing? Yes, many PHAs operate successful PH programs with well-maintained units. PHAs operating public housing units still have access to capital fund financing, operating fund financing, and ABC contracts. And our agency has all three that we're blessed to have. What does this mean for residents? The residents can probably tell you this juncture better than I because we have met more than the White House. Units that are in better physical condition continue the availability of affordable housing and rental assistance in their local community, additional flexibility to move to better housing and their places of opportunity. So HUD's role is to make sure PHAs are aware of all available repositioning strategies, okay? And provide technical assistance to help communities weigh their options. The decision to reposition is voluntary entirely up to PHAs and local stakeholders. So at the end of the day, you know, I think about this time three years ago, um, when we were seated somewhere in this area, I would utilize this phrase in term of sweet spot, right? That sweet spot has since dissipated. It's no longer there. And if you want to know what I mean by that, it's simply look at the state of the economy, look at the state of the fiscal needs uh, of the nation as a whole, look at the cost of goods and services, and look at the challenges that we have with materials and the like. Okay. So section nine, pH options. You have mixed finance rehab and development, choice neighborhoods, operating fund finance program, CF, uh, capital fund financing program, energy performance contracts, section 30, mortgages. Repositioning options, RAD, section 18, demo disco, RAD, section 18, grants, and voluntary conversion. And ironically enough, we have at least within our inventory, and some are joint amps or some are standalone amps, we have a category that can probably speak to each and every one of those options. Are your properties financially sustainable? What are the capital needs of the property? How much does it cost to operate? What does future HUD funding look like? You want me to repeat that question? It's only been declining for the last 25 years. What is the market demand? Does the property have existing debt or other obligations? So the ideal situation was to be able to either build new construction or make significant modernizations debt free, which means by the time that we are completed uh, with the TDC or rebuild or whatever the case may be, there are no outstanding debts. That would be ideal. Not impossible, is doable, challenging, yes, but we can do it. Do you have sufficient program reserves? 
I would venture to say we do. What do your estimated costs look like? Do you operate a housing choice voucher program? Do you have any staffing concerns or significant liabilities? So we waited and weighed all of these, and we still are fine tuning as we go along. Uh, one of the things that my senior staff would tell you, uh, usually within our Monday morning meetings, is that we're going to get to where we need to be ultimately. It may look a little different by the time we get there. What is the best for your community? What are the affordable housing needs in your area? Is the property in a good location for local opportunities? What types of HUD programs do you want to administer? Can you place units in other areas of opportunity and leverage the property's value? Who will own and manage the property? So all those queries and questions that are answered, on for the nine out of 10, you would say ultimately the agency would either be uh, directly or indirectly, that would be either directly owned and or managed or by way of general partner uh, through low-income housing tax credits or whatever other funding resources you may be left with. So here you have what it takes or what it looks like when we are converting, okay? So essentially you have the operating fund, capital fund, and tenant rent. So all of those are pre-conversion. That's prior to. Okay, once a conversion from, let's just say from ACC to non-ACC, uh, you would have housing assistance payments, which is your half, and that is in virtue of a voucher, right? So if you are a voucher um, provider, service administrator with us, then this is what we would get uh, in return. And then attendant rent. So CNAs are capital needs assessment, identify the needed and long-term needs. Long-term SA contract allows access to private sources of capital, such as tax credits, which you heard me mention earlier, and it's low-income housing tax credits. And our financial analysts reminded me today that we probably missed this cycle uh, of tax credits also for the state of Florida this year. Existing public housing funds can support conversion, uh, pre-development costs, rehab, established property reserves, et cetera. DHAs can rehab the existing site, demolish and reveal or transfer assistance to a new location. Resident right of return and prohibition against restreaming. Streamline conversion for very small DHAs, 50 units or less. That is not applicable to us. However, the one just above it, I always like to expound upon that to ensure and provide a certain level of confidence uh, that residents will have, existing residents, will have the first right of return uh, with regards to, and that is providing that they're still in good standing. Now, you try to go out there in the mid 1787s and then come back and say, uh, I'm the number three. No. Okay. So SA enhancements, demolition clarified drawing from all criteria to include costs required by local building codes and federal accessibility requirements, disposition, new eligibility, unsustainable scattered site units, four units or less, and non-continuous sites. Units owned by PHA with 50 or fewer units that S18 blend or more efficient or effective low-income housing. So in essence, when we run the numbers, that would literally drive and dictate what would be best for the agency to further sustainable affordable housing. You know, you have a lot of programs that may appear to be very attractive from the onset. However, it's only in five to seven year window of sustainability. And so we will seek to have the highest amount of course. So we must show that it costs less to operate property with vouchers and with SAS9 funding. Residents may remain if property is used with housing after conversion. PHA eligible to receive tenant protection vouchers. Streamline authority for small PHAs. However, the TPV, you know, that would be great for the immediate area. We know that we are not necessarily landlocked. We are landlord locked because there aren't as many affordable housing opportunities and there are landlords that are available who will be willing to accept and or receive a voucher. 
So those are challenges that the agency would always speak to when we, you hear it say, our 62 fair car units. That would be at least 62 units in one particular area, or even if it's scattered, we would be able to accommodate at least 62. So retention with DOT, uh, and that is the deed of trust, okay? That is what HUD holds on our property, our ACC properties. So for non-residential properties or residential properties that do not receive HUD public housing subsidy, such as assistance, was transferred through RAG, Section 22, voluntary conversion, or Section 33, required conversion. This is where we're trying to stay at point, though. Uh, right now, we're still driving, okay? Uh, what we don't want to do is get to a position where HUD then dictates uh, what we can and or should do, whereas right now we have an opportunity, a window of opportunity still. That's quite the sweet spot, but we still have a window of opportunity to ensure the agency's best interests. PHA must repay HUD the pro rata. Share HUD initially invested. Fair market value HUD may waive this requirement if the PHA provides a good cause exception such as continuing to serve low-income families. Okay, we can go through that because that is not applicable to a very small PHA. That's the PHA for 50 or fewer units. And as you heard earlier, we have 422. Okay, so the new HOTMA authorities, easier for PHAs to use project-based vouchers, PDVs, and formal public housing properties, units are not subject to PDV program, unit limitation is PHA wide. Okay, the units also not subject to income mixing requirement, property unit limitation. PHA can attach PDVs where it is and ownership, interests are controlled without going through competitive award process. I will now provide TPP assistance to any unit that was occupied within 24 months of the demo disco application approval. And so, as you would imagine, this is a process that takes place. And um, so, essentially, any request that we submit for demo disco would be remitted to Chicago SACS, which is Special Applications Center. The RAS Transfer of Assistance Authority, the PJs without ACB program, conversion, and new authority up to 25% of assistance through a supplementary RAS blend and increase the potential revenue of a RAD conversion. So PHAs begin the Section 18 RAD plan conversion by submitting a regular RAD application, so which is the same process that you heard me mention earlier regarding the admittance to Chicago SACS. So where do I start? Consider your local needs, consider your reposition options, talking to the board, talking to residents, and local stakeholders. Strategies, RAD, eight, Section 18 Demo Dispo, RAD, Section 18 Blend, Voluntary Conversion, and ultimately it falls down to which works best for PHA, okay, which is the lack of housing. Okay, so tools that we use. And feel free, you all can go onto the site and you see in the library there, uh, much of the correspondence that we uh, remit to our, our residents and other stakeholders. Right there, all of the program uh, characteristics, essentially everything that we outlined earlier from S18 to RAD, to the plan, to the voluntary conversion, okay? Okay, and this just is a high level view of what it would possibly look like. Of course, we would try and make it as amenable to the existing structures uh, as would be so desired. Uh, within the surrounding area and our community. And that's just some additional guidance and supporting documentation for fair cost 
the rad convergence. And one of the things I think necessary to state, you know, there was previous minimum 60 month requirement upon construction of any new ACC properties. And it's how it's now allowed for agencies to invert uh, the properties prior to that. So essentially it will come under the agency's not for profit as opposed to their own. And that in and of itself is repositioning of the agency's ACC properties. The next item I have again is that there's also a document that could be summed up on the board. Home ownership development plan. Okay, home ownership. Yep. And you see here, Yes, oh, you know, you're an answer or yeah. I thought we were doing that hand. You can do it any time if you have to do it. You prefer it in. Okay, go ahead and see if you want to ask questions. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The um, clicker thingy is working. Would you prefer the clicker? Sure. Okay. So this okay, so this is all right. As you see, and as you heard earlier, we have 422 ACC units. Uh, these are units that we own and match. Okay, uh, units that you see under the agency's um, letter within the city or its jurisdiction. In addition to that, we find that we have 25 additional units called the ALs adjacent to. One of our properties there. We also see that we have that number is actually higher now. We were right at 352 ACVs, varying in type. Uh, the additional ones are managed free vouchers. And I think we received a couple of bags, additional badge vouchers, which is the federal veteran, veterans assistance. Here, I'm just giving a high level, and I'm going back. Because uh, query that I received uh, with regards to the efforts that the agency had made, so I'm bringing it back all the way. And this, uh, I'm sure, uh, the Housing Authority's liaison, all Commissioner Jones, will appreciate. This is data that was there when he was there because he was actually in uh, a couple of these uh, virtual work meetings that we had with HUD DC. So this is a prevalence report. So this essentially shows you everything that goes into the housing authority's decision uh, to continue to work with the property or ultimately dispose of the property. Mass, the assessment subsystem, essentially the grade the agency and its amps. So while the agency is up there 057, the last three digits that you see on the end there are the different amps that are compiled within the agency or the communities. Okay. All of these numbers here that you see to the far left, as far as class scores, we've been averaging about 94, 95 for the last four, five years. So the only reason why it goes back to 2017. Yes, the same data that was utilized at the time. That's why I mentioned your name. Same same data that was utilized then. So what about fresh information? Do you have any fresh information on those scores? For the purposes in which we're doing this, this information is appropriate. I do have fresh information, but this information is appropriate because it speaks to the time in which we have uh, made the necessary efforts that we have today. Uh, but only because you mentioned it earlier, you know, because we're here. You mentioned that things changed. Yeah, earlier you said 50% of the units were in, in certain states. Mm -hmm. Now that changed that you feel at 90 to 95%. Mm -hmm. 
are good. So that's why I asked that question. So where's that data going to support that? That would be some the units good are not seat. necessarily good. I mean, let me bring that to yeah. correction. The units are not necessarily good as it pertains to the way that you mentioned. What is good is the opportunity that the agency has to utilize leverage resources to bring the infrastructure up to par so that it would increase and lengthen the sustainability of affordable housing for these existing needs. Well, yeah, that, that didn't change. You can't change the structure, you know, with regards to, you know, bricks and mortar. Yeah, that that more fun. Funding. Okay. A different, a different. Yes. There you go. You need to know that. It sounds like the um, the 54% that you had at one point. So you can get up to about 99, 94, 95. I'm an ultimate optimist. I'm saying that. Yeah. 5%. Yeah. Probably be probably a different one. Yeah. Raised, but redeveloped. Right. right. Somewhere else. Right. In an effort to decrease density. Right. For the particular purpose of the property or community that we're living in. And that's just right now. We still got, I still have out there, remember the PMAs that I'm awaiting uh, to be conducted that will give me the full form of it, right? Mm -hmm. So the numbers yeah. will tell me, and that's going to, what's going to be driving it. They're right there. Oh, when you trust me, I've been reminded several times. <laughs> All right, <'cause laughs> I've been reminded several times. I'm not saying any acronyms that are either okay. preceded by. <laughs> Or sub subsequent to okay the written I, word. I'll, I'll okay. refer to I just don't just look at my lips and listen to me. Look at the screen and read your paper. Mm -hmm. You got it in both places. All right, I just all right. current vacancies. That's where we were. That's where we are. And I'll go through pretty quickly since you know my liaison already pointed out it's stale. See what those dollars look like. Would you say it's relevant? Yeah. It's, re it's, relevant. it's absolutely relevant because this is the same information that I shared at the round table. Okay. <clears throat> Jogging your memory, recollection. Okay. Help me help you help us. <laughs> PHA's unrestricted cash trending varied for the past, past four years at that time. Okay. At that time. House receivables. And as you all know, how the accounts receivables may have increased, the actual accounts payable. Hello. And they're calling a lot about, you know, uh, the disease, we'll say. COVID has played a major role with that. You said increase or decrease? Receivables may have increased, collections may have increased. You start out at 2025. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's just like so you have a big decrease. Right. Okay, maintenance expenses, as you might imagine, is all increasing on every level with regards to not only supplies, inventory, mm -hmm. but labor costs in and of themselves. Other revenue, and your PHA rental revenue. And your PHA rental revenue in 2018 are subsidy, capital funds, and tenant rents. <laughs> this is where we were then. Background PHA has 422 ACC units and is at 99.53% in occupancy, total of five developments. They also have 345 ACV vouchers under ACC, a capital trial program, average 275,897, CFP 2019, 1 million. PHA vision. I can probably preface this with revisiting my initial statement regarding. State Bill 102 for our liaison. And I'll go and read PHA is in the beginning stages of considering whether or not repositioning or is a good fit. We want general information on MAD, PDV, PDRA, Section 18. And PHA does have 62 units that we would like to rebuild for previous 
from a previous demo. Here's our inventory. Is that a revenue received from the field? Valuation of the property. 1962 properties are obsolete while structures are strong. And remember, this is based off of the original assessment that we have for three and a half, four years. This has changed, this opening sentence has changed to reflect what you see written beside each one now. The Westover Manor, uh, we, we seek to do a RAD with significant nod. Right now, and this is right now, even still, until we get the performers to tell us that, hey, this is not what you want. This will not work best for this particular thing. Uh, Madison Court, and Heights, Northside, James and Long, Ragsdale, Spells, and then the two single family homes on Wall Street. So for the latter two, uh, you see that we have voluntary conversion there. Voluntary conversion for open market and our PDVs for that enemy spells and voluntary conversion for a sale of single family homes on Law Street. So here are the options that were discussed, even when our liaison was in attendance. I was, we discussed the sale of those two properties again on Wall Street. AMS. Law. Enemy spells would benefit from the RAP program. Um, not necessarily a voluntary conversion. Those rents are good, and we can go up to, and we're at 110, 110% of the fair market rent. So next steps, we next up this back and forth, up and down, uh, PHA, continue discussions with the Board of Commissioners. Reposition is something that we would like to continue pursuing and we would keep residents around informed and holding meetings as needed. Uh, also want to submit a red app. Once the board has approved the submissions of an app, resident meetings are continuous and held as needed. And there's the guidance that you see there. That website is good, so you can go to that for additional information on that. PHA updated its PHA plan in 2020 to include repositioning, which was a significant amendment uh, that we ensured was in the, the plan. PHA conducted environmental reviews within 100% of its inventory in accordance to capital needs assessment guidance. PHA is working directly with the field office in Section 18, that's what I heard, to determine the works, what works best for the agency. And you should know that there's been a tremendous turnover in that too. So we're working with differing people three times over now in the field office. Um, but nonetheless, they too have this historical data that we bring forward. So here's some of the additional resources that you'll find concerning RAD and repositioning. An additional repeat of the strategies. The administration of the group. The agency. Okay, so I believe we're at the discussion about city and housing authority process and our goal. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. This is really in here for informational purposes. We also have a uh, interactive map screen that you pull up if you so choose to use it in your discussion. Um, at the last uh, meeting that I've attended, uh, DHA expressed an interest in city available surplus properties. So we've included that list uh, in your packet. And the map also shows the PHA on the properties just for reference.
Okay, does anybody have any questions or comments or discussion about the property specific? Mm -hmm. well, so this is there's a list of summary list of the selected for properties in the city. Um, which talk about how they're going to property, some of them want to stop with them to provide information. Right. They're on that map as well, but I don't know if people are familiar with them. So, um, the blue the problem is, yeah. And again, it, it's just for reference. Uh, in some of the previous conversations, and even today, uh, you probably heard about the reference. Um, <laughs> version is to decentralize uh, some of these um, assets scattered around the city so we thought it may help the conversation to be able to see you uncheck the signal black and properties so you can see both side by side uh, but the um broker price opinion for the city available properties are in the package as well uh, in the event you need those to facilitate discussions but i think that just brings us to the open discussion portion of the agenda so yeah, I'm in. Yeah. So my first question would be, <clears throat> what city-owned property is the housing authority interested in? So it's, whether it's the uh, <clears throat> constructing other fair talk units or what what it's going to have as single-family homes, affordable housing, workforce housing. Should should we treat this venue, Commissioner, if I'm to answer your question, like our last round table or workshop? Or do you want me to put it? At the photo be fine. Um thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Which we're going over the first three components. The, the genesis of this workshop, of this conversation, I don't know if you remember at the last PHA meeting that you and the mayor attended. As a liaison, we discussed uh, our commission and our commissioners uh, voting to terminate negotiations with uh, one of the developers that was bidding on our MDA, MDA Master Development Agreement. Okay. Go ahead. Before I, because my train of thought will go out. Please do. First question was I look at this like a workshop, that, yeah. not a presentation. Right. So I, so my question was, what property are you interested in? That was part of the first question. You got all of them. Yeah, um, right. So okay. the first question I would have to say at or about um, Olive Street and Eleven, we were looking um, <clears throat> for a mixed use bill there, if I'm not mistaken. We were seeking to have retail on the lower level and residential on the upper uh, for that particular area. And there are two parcels that are coming in by the city on the left and now one in Southwest and one specifically. Do you have one in the corner? Which one? Well, I don't see an argument, so I'm not greedy, but I am needed, so I would probably say both. I know that the one that we looked at together, where we had the big uh, yeah. pine across the street, that would be the south end, would it not? Right, that's right. the south. That's the south. Okay. okay. So I believe my chair was looking at the north side, um, and he, he saw a more realistic image and view of what we were aspiring to build there. So you have this in front of you? I gave him one, uh, like a little um, pair. Oh, okay. So which one are those? On the side, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. On the side of the right yeah. there. Say the one on the north left. Right? Oh, yeah. the one you look at. Yeah. Uh, can you use the binder yeah. I was off the city attorney since she's not here? Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
sin. The ones that you were, you and I were looking at is on the left side. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to say, not first time, not the better thing. I don't know. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. There. That way, you got one. That's where you and I were. Yeah. Double. That one. There's three of them there. There's the one to the north side of all of them as well. I don't want to be. Yeah, they're just like side by side, but it's funny if you just, yeah. So there's that one, the one to the north of it, and the one on the other side of all the tree where you can barely see the, the portion of the tree. So oh, which one of those? Because that's one and that's one, and I can't read the number, right? That's right next to it. So which one are you thinking of? Or both of them? All uh, I repeat the short answer that, that <laughs> my, my chair did it was all of them. Because we're looking at not only and in the second part of your question uh, was the type of deal, mm -hmm. right? So none of these were deemed to be suitable for our 62 background units, right? That first and foremost. However, as for single family homes, as far as a scaled down retail residential uh, bill that I mentioned earlier, or even a smaller multifamily bill, it would be ideal for that and possibly even a duplex. So, the reason why I asked about fair mm -hmm. is because I think in 1999, when uh, they were approved, the replaced. So between 1999 and 2023, what have prevented PHA from developing or putting these 62 units somewhere in the public county? What happened? I can only speak from 2018. August 2018 to present date. Uh, and that was absolutely no support from any needed um, team members or stakeholders, uh, aside from the agency in and of itself and the residents alike. No support from the city, no support from the county, no support from the you know, No support from the city. Correct. Well, some, some of I mean, yeah, I, mean I, I didn't know anything about you being in the system of the help with anything. So, and this was prior, prior to 2015. Uh, 2015. You know, we had different mayors, we had different city managers. Uh, public housing wasn't particularly popular during that period from the availability of those 62 units until today. Um, since I've been on the commission, not even as chairman, we tried to develop and build and get those 62 units back. And through that period, we've seen property values skyrocket. Um, and it's been difficult to compete uh, without certain subsidies. And that sweet spot that we missed that Dr. Woods was referring to, we missed it because those developers could make a lot more money than working on projects of our size and within the confines of red. And so we did not have support from the city. We did not have support from stakeholders. Back that up. Um, okay, who, who, where, the, the board is the city. So when you say the city, we talk about the commission as a whole. Correct. I'm not aware of anything from 2015 to present that I was not, uh, I was part of that. I said I, I wasn't supporting your, your cause. Oh, of course. So I'm thinking of like Mr. Simbor from 2013. He was here a very short time. Yes, he was yeah, here. You know, and I'm, this is prior to my tenure, but since I've known Doc, Dr. Woods and since your liaison was actually on, since Commissioner Jones was of the city commission was on 
Commissioner Jones of the Palatka Housing Authority Commission, this has been a constant topic being brought up again and again, trying to get our 62 units back and applying for these uh, programs. And so we've attempted to, and we've been, uh, we've been in a bottleneck of trying leverage. We keep hearing the term leverage. We need properties to be able to leverage in order to build new units, in order to renovate existing units, okay? In order to become attractive to other developers because the offers that we're getting from developers are quite frankly insulting to the integrity of, of, of our board, of my board. And we're not going to give, give away the farm, which is what every developer wants. And so the genesis of this meeting was to make it to where our authority is more attractive Okay, to get properties that we can lever to leverage in order to get more properties on the tax rolls and to have a cooperative to where you understand why we've had two MDAs fall through and we're, we're coming to you for help in order to ascertain a path forward, which yeah. Dr. Woods uh, has worked tirelessly with a number of consultants in order to achieve. So when I say we haven't had support, this is one of those instances that we're coming to you for support. I, I understand what you're saying, but I'm, I can't speak for the rest of the commission, but I can only speak for myself. Um, I have no idea what the challenges that you all have had. So that's just for and me. That's what I think right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Commission has to be Just want to uh, back up and add. You asked the question about which properties, and you said all of them. So you're referring to the four that are on the docket here. You're interested in all four of them. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. And then thank you for sharing the challenges, the challenges that you all have gone through. I need to know the processes that you all have gone through and brought before this commission in which you have not received support. Okay. Well, that would be chronicled. Again, I, I said, uh, I want to say, Honorable Mayor and uh, Mr. Griffin, mm -hmm. some historical data where it was forwarded to all of the commission and prior administration about to bring it forward from at or about this time, 2018. And I will resend that to you also. Okay, and notwithstanding what was, I'm more, I really am more adamant today as to where we are now. So, yeah. I, what I want to talk to you about is what that you are. Okay. And what you are for this commission so that we will have a document and, and awareness yeah. process yeah. so that yeah. we can help that the will of the political that we can do that as a Happily, happily, I will do that. I will do that. And I and I know that you and I, we met by property a number of times. We walk and talk. So notwithstanding, okay, and I can tell you, when I say notwithstanding, I'm encompassing a lot because something as simple as reading the agency nine and five year plan was worse than worse of the experience that no agency that I've ever been affiliated with had to do. So as simple as that. You know, to let alone to the construction and new construction. But when I tell you that outside influences sometimes affect internal processes, it's a reality. And we'd be fooling ourselves, we'd be putting blinders on if we did. You know, at the end of the day, all we have is what we have. Today, we have the opportunity to go forward. And that's what I'm seeking to do. I will get all of the information that you requested to me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and with that said, there was also, again, a, a bit of a discussion about the properties that the Housing Authority currently owns that they may want to dispose of or not have any longer. Um, specifically, Jonathan, can you describe that property? Well, I think what we spoke to Dr. Woods about was trying to better understand the repositioning and giving him an opportunity to talk about if they're looking at closing uh, some of their facilities and replacing with new, what does that mean for the existing real estate so that the commission and the public will kind of have an understanding of how public housing would evolve? Well, the short of how that went is a little like this. 
The Housing Authority has approximately 900 applicants on its waiting list. The Housing Authority cannot afford to reduce its inventory with that number of families in need of affordable housing assistance. However, the Housing Authority does have in its possession some property that is void of structures that it has been seeking alternative uses for, even if not residential. Uh, some to the tune of even either business or retail or leasing or otherwise. Uh, but those are things that the Housing Authority is doing. Uh, I know that one of the properties that it came up uh, was Central Academy. While the Housing Authority does not have a budget for Central Academy because the Housing Authority is the Housing Authority um, and not the Department of Education property, um, you know, that is something that we can possibly conjoin on and trying to seek to work with uh, for the benefit of the community as a whole. But that is the, uh, I know that we have void space adjacent to James A. Long, uh, right across the street from uh, the flag. Uh, that is one of the properties that we were, had been looking into doing some type of business venture and or land lease for. But that's the only yeah. one. I do have property. Oh, you got they own that. Oh. Adjacent. It's, it's, front, it's frontage of uh, James A. Those are some of the properties that you have. Well, when they have oh, you just got it. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. right. They're, so, they're, they're more valuable to you. So I did, if you'll allow me, I wanted to add something uh, to the discussion about Central Academy. Um, the Housing Authority kind of expressed a concern that it's not within their normal duties to go looking at securing outside funding to clean up that property and maybe turn it over to a higher and better use. That is something that would fall typically under the purview of the city from a redevelopment perspective. Um, I do believe that it is likely that we could assist um, or even secure funding at the federal or state level um, to clean that property up um, and then ultimately turn it over uh, to a higher and better use. Uh, I understand there need to be some conversation about how to honor the past of that property. Um, uh, I believe most people would agree that it's probably not reasonable to restore the existing structure, um, but you do have some existing historical uses that need to be mitigated there. There was a, a fleet facility in operation for a number of years, uh, and there's some other structures that would need to be removed from the property, but that was a partnership that we kind of conceptualized, you know, when we previously met, we wanted to offer that to the commission as maybe a, a path forward uh, to see some results, some positive results with that site. I think that's what we need of another time. First of all, that matters not to this meeting. <clears throat> and I would like to stay a little focus on workshop and what we're workshopping. So, with all due respect for you guys' uh, vision, not that this time, I don't know where I'm at, what we say. But it goes back to the question that I asked about those um, units, and you just you guys even made it a little more clear. You own property already, not the central gambling property, you own other properties. Again, the opportunity has been there. You guys just mentioned about the resources that you have. Why haven't any of those? Units been raised, and uh, I have had a tour on the housing authority board I serve, and I asked them, the masking at this capacity now, why aren't they? And yeah, that is a big hot item, but those that item have been an open item, not closed. So why haven't you done it? <clears throat> and if these areas are going to be targeted for that, or we're talking about work for the government housing. For mixed use. Wait, and also when you start talking about just say this property for mixed use, when you talk about retail at the bottom and housing at the top, now we're getting into will 
we have to, or are we planning on giving tax credits to them when that could be used for a different type of developer that we would actually be receiving taxes for? So that's a question. I know there's a lot of people questioning. That's, that's, yeah, I mean, that's the point. That's actually the point we talking about dealing with specifically providing housing for what well, not workforce housing but just affordable housing. So that that I mean that's a good question. I will go back to my initial statement and I refer you both to Florida Senate Bill 102. Uh, I think you'll find that an interesting read and that will probably answer your questions. So, um, and I've got one time. Pat, Mr. Castle, do you want to say something? No, yeah. yeah. okay. um, Also, just I think to clarify, not that it had to be one way or the other, but that if we had a mixed use structure on that property, the commercial portion of it would be taxed, just to clarify, even though we recommend you not. Right. Madam Mayor, or um, you know, in the room. I don't know if it's appropriate to ask council if you can summarize said bill one or two for those that are not aware of the bill that just got passed by the chamber. Is it okay if you summarize what Senate Bill One or Two says so that everyone mm -hmm. in the room can understand what it's now? Thank you. And, and a brief summary of. I know that you read it out, but kind of summarize in layman terms what it means, what it says. I, I, I kind of know a little bit about some. I mean, I know what you said. But but some, some, I do know, learn a little bit about it, like I said, and looking for the for, for the summary. But see, I do know that they do give priority to housing authority. Yes, they do. So, no, let's have somebody who's read it. I may be wrong. I was about to say, they have to read the caption. Yeah. It's a No caption. I'm the chairman of the chairman that has the committee. No, I'll talk about it. You're part of the workshop. <laughs> <No, I'm laughs> <talking laughs> Um, okay, so in short, it limits your commission's authority, from my understanding, on placing restrictions on us achieving our mission. Uh, that's just a one sentence summary. <laughs> okay, so I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, signed today, right? Was it today? It was in recent. Yeah. It's yeah. effective July 1. Uh, effective yeah. July 1, the Live Local Act, deleting the authority of local governments to adopt or maintain laws, ordinances, rules, etc., that would have an effect imposing controls on rents, providing an exemption from ad valorem taxation for lands that meet certain criteria authorizing local governments to adopt ordinances to provide an ample warrant tax exemption for portions of property used to provide affordable housing, meeting certain requirements, suspending for a specified period the general revenue fund service charge on dock stands uh, authorizing the governor under the Florida Job Growth Grant Fund to approve or state public infrastructure projects to facilitate the development or construction of affordable housing, et cetera. Appropriation 711 million. Back to my point, it was affordable housing, and that's what I understood from that particular bill. And so it points back to affordable housing. Well, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Yeah. What I'm saying is that you're saying issues or rent, you know, you got business down below and you got uh, affordable, affordable housing, uh, residential up top. Right. That's different. You right. can't, you can't live in a business. But you should, we, you're not much of living in a business. So that's absolutely right. And that's why we're here. So right. all of, um, so we were joking about acronyms, right? 
ACC properties. What are ACC properties? We're just getting a check from HUD, right? We're getting a check from, from HUD and we're getting reimbursed. That reimbursement rate is going down, okay? So where do we want to be? Instead of being uh, our property being owned essentially by us with a DOT deed of trust, I love acronyms, right? Deed of trust that prevents us from borrowing money against our own properties. We can't borrow money. Now, is it smart to borrow money now? Probably not the most intelligent thing to borrow money at 7% at this moment, okay? At this moment, rates will come down in the next year. When we started this venture together, if you remember, we were all sitting right here. Rates were what, three and a quarter? It made a lot of sense to try to borrow 25 million, okay? And so why are we here? We're trying to make our entity more attractive so we can build, get a night, get our 62 units, build more tax base, okay? That commercial would be permitted within our nonprofit that is fully uh, operated, uh, well, technically owned and operated by our housing authority. There are no deeds of trust or preventions from us borrowing money as long as what we do is for the primary purpose of facilitating our mission statement, which is provided, providing affordable housing to, to more individuals. And that's our goal. If you look at South Carolina, they have, I mean, there were, their nonprofit is larger than their housing authorities in inventory in, in uh, certain cities. That's our ultimate goal 10 years from now. And so, um, you know, I had a, just a conversation I wanted, wanted to have our 30 day goal, 60 day, 90 day, uh, one year, three year, five year, 10 year goal that I wanted to share with you and how you can help us achieve that and all the benefits to your commission and to the city specifically, as far as developing our tax base, um, which is which is in everyone's goal. And we have properties that we'll never be able to put a single family home on that are very attractive to you, just as re referenced by Mr. Griffiths and Dr. Woods. Now the, the gen, and again, the genesis of this meeting was, uh, was our failure, okay? It was our failure. We had two MDAs fall through. We chose entities to develop an MDA, Master Development Agreement, for our commission. Well, uh, one of them, while well, Commissioner Jones was on the Boulevard Group, and then this last group, the Fortis Group. And people were bidding on our properties and bidding on this development, 30, 50, $70 million potential development opportunity. And it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth putting our mission at risk by signing a deal uh, that uh, was not going to be a long-term attractive partnership for PHA. What's more attractive is for us to partner with our, our, our neighbors, okay? Which is the city of Palatka uh, and our local stakeholders. Yeah, but that's a lot. Yes, Commissioner. That's a great spiel. Right? You like that? Yeah, but you know what? First mission is to our public house. And going back to the same question, I'm going to ask you to answer. Somebody answered. 62 units, public housing to help people that's in need. You got a list, 90 some people, you said. 900. 900. 900. So <laughs> those 62 wouldn't be a lot taken off that list, but it is of people who actually need not affordable housing, they need hood housing. Any support, any house. Right, but these particular folk that uh, meet the requirements to be in a, a public assisted housing, you, we, we try to help them. So tell me, when we're talking. I, I understand. Okay, so, so can you, why haven't this? we built those? Yes. Look at the minutes for, I think I've missed three commission meetings in five years, maybe, maybe, maybe four. Ever since I'm chairman, uh, we have brought up at almost every single meeting, um, let's fund our nonprofit, let's spend our unrestricted money, okay? Uh, while we're in the process of, a, of RFQs and RFPs for the NDAs, for people to come in, okay, and bid on our projects, bring, you know, and bid on the development of our units. What is the purpose of that? The purpose is to create more 
uh, more more units, greater quality within our nonprofit. Now, if we went ahead and built the 62 units of ACC property under some of the plans that Dr. Woods showed, we could immediately build those AC property, ACC properties and convert them under section 18, is that right? Under the section 18 plan. However, we're less attractive if we have less liquidity as an entity. So we could go ahead and spend all of our money on those 62 units, but it would hamstring us in order for the larger plan for the rest of our 420 units. So if we spend all of our money, what we're trying to do is leverage. You know, that's why we're talking about real estate right now. We're talking about real estate, we'd like to leverage that. And we don't want to own it, we want our nonprofit to. And that way we can borrow and leverage and we can build a cooperative with, with the city. Does that answer your question on why we didn't spend our unrestricted money? I think that portion of it, I think there's another portion of the question that wasn't for you, because what commissioner was going to do? Wait a minute, this is 900. That's very low. 62. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The board meeting, you were talking about real estate that's going up in South Bend. Mm -hmm. Don't cover you. So I was speaking. So in South Putnam, and this is the interesting part about uh, as we develop Latka, the nonprofit is not confined by the restraints of only developing in Latka. We're coming here because the need is in Latka. Okay. I, I think that yeah, I think that is what I'm not. Concerns, but one that still questions about yeah, yeah. as to why just collective. Okay. Part of the application, there is a question. Oh, then I'm going to ask an appropriate question, but I just want to ask one on the application. I wonder the question is are you a US citizen? Mm -hmm. I believe it is. I'm not sure. Yeah. How many residents are part of the that's on the waiting that are from Sutton County? We have a number on the waiting list as far as residents per unit. From Sutton County. Oh, they're all, I think they're all from. Now, no, no. all those with truckers, perhaps. Yeah, all those for for so what you truckers. And they preference. Yeah, you get a preference for being uh, as far as actuals, I don't have that many. That's she actually asked my question. But I do have a question, and this is more so for the Interim city manager. Um, and just kind of thinking how we got to this point. I'm gonna kind of rewind. The properties that have been listed have others aside of the lack of housing authority express any interest. So these properties have not been listed. We were still waiting on authorization from the commission to list. So this going back to our last meeting, how did we get to this? Uh, the housing authority came up under the agenda item where staff was presenting the available surplus lands and requesting direction to list. Then Dr. Woods expressed an interest that the housing authority um, had in those properties and the workshop was scheduled. So at that meeting, and I'm just asking questions, yeah. trying to get to a point. At that meeting, there were individuals who expressed interest in some of the properties oh yes why was preference given to the lack of housing versus allowing others who have been or who are interested to go through the same process or have the same deals as, as the property as to like a housing authority before. Because going back, and I'm making a point 
Commissioner um, Commissioner Warren and Commissioner McCaskill Act, and I'm very I've been on this thing for eight years, so I've seen where the lack of housing authority has come before. I've seen where the conversations have, even when they were building the two houses that were on um, on Laurel Street, and Commissioner McCaskill just brought up the point of South Putt. South Putnam didn't want public housing in their area. That's why you all are saying that the need is here in Palatka. If there is a need for housing, no matter where they, no matter where the houses are built, they're going to get there. And so the conversation also at that time was we didn't want any additional public housing in the city. So my question is, even getting to circling back around, how did we get to, we're at this point, but then again, there are others that are interested that will be able to build and those properties will be taxed at the value of what we need here in our city. I am no way, no shape, no form saying that we do not need affordable housing, subsidized housing, or any other kind of housing. However, again, we have a duty as we sit here on this dais to make sure that our tax base continuously grows. And then again, as of July 1, we don't really have a say in anything. So if we were to make a decision, if we were going to make a move, it needs to be done by June, the last day in June to ensure that our thoughts our concerns, our desires are fully put in. If not, no deal. If I may, uh, at least, just want to say this. And just briefly, I think. Commissioner Jones, correct me, always correct me when I'm wrong. I think that you asked for preference, and we were told that you can't get preference, and that's not a preference for it. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think he asked, and that's how it came up. I'm not saying that you have it either way, but I think in the last meeting, that's how we got to the preference part. Mm -hmm. We came to the meeting. And the individual that was interested in the property was here at the meeting, and we said that we were going to have a workshop. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. We said it. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, is it safe to say, and the meeting was noticed, the workshop was noticed, am I right? Mm -hmm. So with that being said, would it be fair to say that they would have had the opportunity to be at this workshop to give input? No, because it was specifically for the Palaka Housing Authority. It wasn't for anybody who was interested in the properties as a whole. Now, if that would have been the thing, that's how it should have been. So I want to ask this. That's why I said it right now. If I'm wrong. So in the meeting, refresh my memory, we did say with the Palaka Housing Authority, and I thought to be wrong that we brought it up and said that we couldn't give them preference, but others come as well. And I thought maybe that's when you chimed in and said for others to come as well. But correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Is, is that what you just said? Okay, I, I could be wrong because I thought at some point in the meeting you chimed in or I, I, I missed it. I, I want to make sure. Wasn't the guy that was here who's no longer here? Wasn't he the individual that expressed interest in one of the properties? And if we're looking at the way that this is presented, it doesn't give input really for anybody else who is interested in a property. And I would say from the outset, this workshop was designed to be honest. Like when Commissioner Jones did bring up the housing authority, and this is what this workshop was focused on. It wasn't anybody else. So just to be clear. I just didn't want to put it on the record. There have been others that have expressed interest in these properties. Um, this workshop was scheduled as a result of Dr. Wood coming up under the last agenda item saying the PHA had an interest 
So the specific purpose of this workshop was to discuss the PHA's interest and in how it related to their repositioning plan. Um, I've spoken to Ms. Thomas about this. Um, we do believe that the best course of action, uh, regardless of what you decide to do with the PHA, is to most likely um, entertain other proposals, Absolutely. be it through a request for proposals or an invitation to negotiate. But through those different um, advertisements, you can spell out your intent with those properties. So if it is for affordable housing, you can evaluate the responses based upon that intent. Intent. If it is to just put it on the tax rolls and get the highest and best price, you can put that in the RFP or invitation to, to negotiate. I simply just want us to be fair. I want us to have a process that, regardless of who is interested in the property, that everyone has a say with it. We did the same thing when we had the conversation about uh, Hammock Hall. We want to be fair. And again, I'm not against <coughs> public housing. I want to make that totally clear. But again, as we sit behind this diet, or as I sit behind this diet, I want to make sure that everyone has a, who has a best interest in the moving this city forward, that they have a seat at the table. We always talk about having skin in the game, having a seat at the table. Just imagine the man who walked out of here who wanted to be at the table, but didn't have the opportunity to be at the table. So I, want to I don't I don't really need a response because I my, my I statement is my I'm statement. actually trying to go all the way back to Commissioner Jones' original question with where he where he was asking. Why the agency had not constructed the 62 Fair Park campus. First and foremost, we don't have property within our inventory that could accommodate such a thing. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, even if we were to, if, if I were to try and find a ways and means to repurpose, uh, and I know it came up and I know you said at a later date, but the only thing closest to the acreage needed for such a deal would be Central Academy. And that would be repurposed for that particular use. You know, aside from that, we don't have a single lot that would be amenable to such a deal. Man, I can answer that question. But let so since all other questions on the bar though of those answers, let me clarify. I was that guy that said Black Housing Authority is basically the city's housing agent. So this this meeting is doing exactly what I think it's intended to do. And I even asked for the meeting what we're trying to get out of this meeting, but it, it, it lies right here. And what I hear, everybody's hearing the same thing. But for all intents and purposes, I want to hear what the housing authority's goal, scope, and purpose was going forward. We hear that, and we we should be able to make decisions based upon their presentation to us in the needs of the city. Wasn't, so So when I say preference, I mean hearing from them first, that's it. That's clarity. As for the sale of the properties, I agree. It should go through the process of then going through, all right? So I think they're doing their presentation. But what I'm hearing is being an investor versus a housing agent right now, because you guys and them, you know, what seems like you're presenting to us about your not for profit being an investor and in wanting to actually invest in property and development here in Palaka. Okay, um, so Commissioner like, Kimball and Valentin have stated, me and McCaskill, excuse me, stated, you're basically in the pool with everybody else because you turned into a private investor. And I'm talking about for like a housing authority, and that's why I keep saying 62 units, because that is something that you guys own the city of Palaka in, 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 in your residence. Because residents were just, just a little history, residents were misplaced. They were displaced, excuse me, displaced when they tore down the high rise and they spent the building they were built and it didn't accommodate all. So we still have, let's just say, be honest with it, with lack of a better term, but it is the term that should be used. Homeless people. We have 62 people that didn't have a home. And it should be addressed. And I think 
we're doing a disservice if we don't at least attempt to make a good faith effort in getting them a priority somewhere to live. That's what I'm saying. So, so now you see my concerns of why I was talking about that. So when you reference, I was on the board, I know that, and that's a board that needs to be filled, and I hope that we could assist in those 62 units, some kind of shape or form. That's, that's just what I want to clear that over. You did. You did. You actually addressed everything that needs to be addressed with regards to, but you misinterpreted what the chair was saying. He's saying that from the vantage point of the not for profit, because that was who ultimately be managing, right? But the bill of the 62 units, they are affordable housing units. They are the same. You have, in all the years you know me, you have ne never heard me refer to our property as public housing. Public, public housing takes on a whole different context. You heard me say affordable housing. And for the Section 8 program, you heard me say assistant housing. Sir, I know you didn't require a request or response, but you need to know that the housing authority has a jurisdiction to work within. The housing authority has a jurisdiction to work within. That's where those 62 units have to go. It's not because of housing needed here or needed there. It's because of where the jurisdiction, the boundary lines, the chalk lines are popped by flood, resource. That's why they have to go within the city limits because that's that's been redesigned. I understand that. I was speak, I was speaking to the various meetings and the things that we brought up South Bend. We brought up all of those things. So I, I was getting to a point. I know about the jurisdiction. Let me expand upon that now. I said, how does it go? Not for profit? We can go down at a key way, but exactly. it means 1,300 units. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, I think we all understand that this issue is people displaced around whoever they may be and, and that requirement to meet that need. Um, Mr. McCaffrey, thank you. And I'm, just, I'm glad you brought up that, that, um, that point because I think that we just need to do a better job. You know, it's no um, harm intended to our commission, but just like you did a great job for your point of clarity, explaining what you mean. Well, when you bring that up, I think if we would have done that before and just during the last meeting before that young man, that gentleman left out of here, it would have been um, maybe he would have got feeling better out of the house and left out of here feeling. But I just think that we would do a better job of explaining uh, or clarifying what we need. So thank you for bringing that up. And we could see why you say something. Right? You still so I want them to address uh, Commissioner Campbell's assertion about equity or fairness regarding the properties uh, that we're discussing. Um, I'm a capitalist. I think that the best use uh, of the property will be dictated by who's willing to pay the most for it, right? Uh, because that person can make the most use out of it. This is your property. This is your property as a city. Now, you could get a certain amount of money from us if you could get $25 more from another individual, you're being a good capitalist by taking $25 more from another individual. We're your partners. We're housing your, your residents. We're trying to build and expand upon our mission. And we're attempting to raise, to, raise, to redevelop, to renovate, to create uh, a safer uh, environment for all of our residents and for more residents. If we start earning more profits, we can build as many Section 8 units as we like. Okay, so we can start building single family homes. We can begin. So I want, you know, as, as far as potentially selling, like, it was brought up whether or not this commission supports the Palatka Housing Authority, and that this commission has never supported the Palatka Housing Authority. We're coming here to ask you for your support right now. I am, okay? I've been a broken record asking for another workshop for three years as, as we've been going through this MBA. So if we wanna take, if your commission decides to take bids on all of these various properties, for potentially getting more than we're willing to pay or trade some of our valuable properties. That's our answer as far as the support that we're being rendered. Um, I think that our success 
is going to lead to even greater success for the city of Palatka as we're able to facilitate more individuals, more money coming in federally, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars more every single month coming in from federal vouchers, okay, as opposed from money being moved from one pocket from a citizen in Palatka to another pocket, we're getting injected with capital from a federal level as you support our entity. And so I wasn't really prepared to uh, present on that point, but I think our success really does lead to more success for the city of Palatka because so much more money is going to be injected to increase the economy. So if there's a gentleman here that wanted to buy the property and wanted to pay negligibly more, or even if you gave it to us versus selling it for 200,000, we'll make you tenfold that over the next 10 years by expanding upon what we're offering. Does that make sense? That sounds good. But everybody and we want to make sure that everyone has the same opportunity because you don't know what that person is going to build on that property. You right. can't speak to the future. You can only speak to right now. And giving individuals the opportunity to have the same buy-in that you have is what we're here to do. Now, we hope that everyone who builds on the property, who has access to the property, do the right thing with the property. Again, we're not trying to keep anybody home. But then again, we want to make sure that if you want to be at the table, be at the table. If they want to be at the table, give them the opportunity to be at the table. That, that's my only thing. That's, I understand jurisdiction. I understand, I understand absolutely everything that you said. And I wholeheartedly, that was the attorney, right? So, no, that, that's, no, no, the, no, 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 that's that, the that, no, 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 that was a, that's the question. That, that's the question. So the same passion that you speak with, I'm speaking with as well. We have to provide the same opportunity. I can't sit here and say, I'm going to give somebody else to say another opportunity. I, I have to, my balance has to be completely, it just has to be the same way. It has to be there. And so the only thing, and I'm going to bring this up because Commissioner Sh um, Jones shut it down. What I heard as a part of this conversation was some way, somehow acquiring Central Academy. I don't know about y'all, but in the conversation, I, Commissioner Jones shut it down very quickly. And when um, when uh, Jonathan had the opportunity to speak, some way, some shape, somehow, that is going to come back, and that's going to be something that's going to be a heavy hitter when it's time to have a conversation about moving forward. I may be wrong, but based on the conversation and the benefit, if we acquired it. In the state and the condition that it's in. One thing I would like to say that I know that we have probably gone around up the street and back again. Uh, but at the end of the day, for full disclosure, I want to say that in my meeting with both the mayor and uh, Mr. Griffin. I did say I can't recall anything being specific to the cooperation agreement, but I re recommended a suggestion that you all check your bylaws to ensure that there was anything as it pertains to partnerships between the two entities because of what uh, Commissioner Jones said, and that is because the housing authority is in existence, partly because of the city's cooperation agreement. So. Uh, with that in of itself, I don't know if that afforded any type of preference with regards to the offering of property or anything of that nature. But at the end of the day, even in that, I said if you do what's in the best interest of the city, and I think both will attest to that. So we're not in we're not in the business. I said as asked when asked which property you want. I said I'm not greedy. I'm needy. I take them all. That did not, I did not say that I will have all of them at the end of this discussion. That's not what I was saying. My preference was because I know the more that we can acquire, the more we can leverage. The more we can leverage, the quicker we can get on board for enhancing all of the initiatives. In a perfect world, that's why you saw that dated information. In a perfect world, that dated information would have yielded at least two to three low-income housing tax credit bills to date. 
that would have afforded this agency an opportunity to pour those non federalized dollars into the enhancement and improvement mm -hmm. of Central Penn. That did not happen, right? So I can't go back in time and bring that time back. So the dilapidation that occurred from that point to this one is there. That is what you see. But I don't have those non federalized dollars as a result of three more successful low income housing tax credit deals from developer fees that we had hoped to garner to be able to utilize for that purpose. So, but at the end of the day, we have today. Let's take today and let's move forward the best way we can. And I thank you for your support, your continued support, and whatever information that you need, I'll get to. Okay. And I will resend and I will send again. But I just want you to know that we are in the business of providing housing that is decent, safe, and sanitary, and good repair. I vowed some five years ago that PHA would be good neighbors. And that's what we intend to do, even to this day. Thank you for your support, time, and consideration. Um, thank you for hearing us in our position. Um, we'll keep coming back and asking for additional workshops. Uh, I think that having an understanding of what all of the acronyms are, what the 10-year plan is, what the five-year plan is, not what one transaction will look like, whether or not it's the most amount of money that we can make on one day, but what the revenue, you know, if, if all we care about is revenue, our success is your success. We'll have a 40, 50, 60 million dollar project once this MDA takes off. We have new consultants to help us to succeed in this project and revitalization. So this is the first conversation. And I think that literacy and the intricacies, so I've been on the board for five or six years, I'm learning more things every, every time I do a workshop uh, at a federal or state level. Every time I read what's going on, I'm learning something. And we should all learn this together because our success is your success. I'm very excited about additional conversations about why a short-term great decision may not be the long-term best decision, okay? And I think I'd like to uh, end that plea uh, to get preference from the city on uh, that point. And then I think so that we would be on board to go ahead and work on scheduling another workshop so we can be brought to term with regards to the acronyms and the role and all the things that were just stated. And so, will we have a workshop just to be educated on something, or because I hope that we don't have to come back? Uh, I think you did a great job, a wonderful job at educating us on what we need to be educated on. I hope that we don't have to keep coming back to the table or workshop. I hope at some point we can strengthen our partnership with the housing authority. I don't want to come back just to be educated on acting. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, the acronym dictionary, um, I can't read that one needed yet to touch strength and I the And I, again, I'm not here for the previous workshop. Was there a table below and what is the opposition to a round table kind of setting? I just think, I feel like we're talking about. Let's go to me. We went there before. We, we went out at. We were, we went out there to them, and I think that would be good. We went out to your center one time, and I think that was very nice. They've come up a couple of times. The, the uh, commission is not objective to that. Commissioner Bourne, Commissioner Jones. It, it's feasible to hold the meeting there. There just may be some limitations on how and what we can stream to the public. I, 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 think, I think here is the best form. Because of your reasons right there, you know, if you're streaming, um, you don't have to place an employee um, in, in the room. Suggesting below, though. Not I know that's a good type. We're fine, Tommy. I mean, 
So I was around something right here. They just happened to be sitting, and they're sitting right across from us. Um, we did it before. Just one up close in front of us. Yeah, it removed barriers. We can move that comfort. Who has suffered? So we form something. Well, it's a workshop. It's the only time that we're able to speak. And so if you got me here, I'm away from my, away from my job. I'm going to make the best use of this time. Um, because we do, there are things like this we really do need to discuss a little more in, in, in depth and detail. And if we really want to know uh, the role that PHA is playing, um, it, it's the time to ask now. Because maybe, see, <clears throat> where my challenge is with you and Jonathan, had a conversation with the, the CEO, we didn't have the knowledge about it. So when things do come up, I guess this is the only time that I can ask you about it or ask the city manager. Uh, what are your thoughts? And, and, and here we are. If uh, Commissioner Campbell would have went back to it, that would have probably flew over our heads. Um, and we could kind of like openly, I wouldn't want to do that because I was in the end of the month. But what I'm saying is, once we start talking about things, you confused him. You want to be clear about it? Yeah, I want to clarify. Want to clarify is what I'm saying. Friend number one. Want to go point of order play. So it, the first question is, I think because it's a open to the public meeting, it's a workshop. Um, this form will be probably best because we want actually. Other folks to come in to actually participate. <laughs> we did have an option for public discussion or questioning. So the gentleman that you guys are speaking of, he could have spoken. And and if it was unfair to him or unclear, he could he had opportunity at that point. So we did not exclude him. Exactly what I think. Yeah. No, I'm making this camera is still saying no. So I'm saying my piece. So at that point, he could have said something or asked the house or the, or, or gave his attention. I think so. Um, and that's why it's more, I think it's more inviting here to just sum it up. I think it's more inviting to the public to come and participate if we do. So I disagree. Think about how many times we've gone into the community and we've had a greater response because we met people where they were. A lot of people are intimidated. By I say Price Martin, man. Not a lot of people it. are intimidated by these chambers. A lot of people don't feel as if their words matter when we come into this venue. So that's why I make a suggestion: if we're looking for a greater buy-in, let's meet them where they are. I don't have a problem with the side. I think price might like it's a compromise if we're not going to go to the house and it's already settled. Yeah, um, it depends on what collective like, group wants to do. Any way we can eliminate failure. Okay. Well, we could have done that. We met down before, like we have in the end of my game. Right. So when this came about, I'm just fitting in how it was set up. I had no part in that. So the long story short, again, we need to go so we can get the greatest um, um, it's a participation and, and let's see what we can do to try to partnership and make a lot of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whichever venue we decide, I feel like my marching orders from your commission are to demonstrate why solidifying our relationship and ensuring our success long term means a lot more to the city of Palatka than short term decisions that may appear negligibly more profitable, but collectively harm the uh, citizens that can benefit the most from affordable housing. And so irrespective of the venue, those are my marching orders to demonstrate economically why that's a good decision. And I'm very excited to demonstrate uh, why that relationship is so important. With that being said, are we considering I want to know I just want to know I want to know. I mean, I mean, wherever we can go, the greatest. 
And we, you know, the city can stream there as well, like so we can stream there. We can, Commissioner, but the quality of it is is not that great. So my recommendation would be if you do not have the meeting where you're sitting on the dais, even if you set it up in here or at the PHA or Price Martin, that we don't try and stream, that we just record the meeting and we encourage people to come out and take part at the location. If the intent is to go meet people where they're at, um, I don't think the intent would be to stream that I feel like we are coming to it would be excuses versus trying to formulate a solution. And I think there's time between now and then. We just did it before. We can do it again. And we can no excuses. Let's find a resolution. And then if we don't find that resolution, we resort back to the first thing. But let's find a resolution. Because we don't want to do it with excuses, which means we're not even looking at the option of it. With that said, I think we were saying that just might not be as feasible to stream. I don't know. I, I think we should be going out to the community and trying to get some gift shop meetings so that we can get different questions of the community involved. But I think that's important, and we seem, seem to be isolated here. Um, folks are coming in as much as we like. I'd rather have more people hear about this conversation than just a few. Uh, I think a lot of people raise issues and concerns they may have about the housing authority, but they're not here as they both sides. Is that we do need to go to them, I guess, to make it easier. But I would, it may not be a quality stream, but it still can be streamed, even though maybe we can't find a quality stream. We need to look at another in the I'm I'm fine with going to the housing authority for all price not. Even though it's probably going to be like that. But the housing authority is not in the public then. Right. Right. So that's the so, story. I think that's just, you know, that's an erroneous statement. <laughs> <laughs> That is an important The Housing Authority has been open all through the pandemic. The Housing Authority is the only right. in the city swinging doors. We have not closed since. You got to know sign that sign out. Saying that the yeah, Housing Authority is open for business and has been since August of 2018. So you guys are allowed for business, but are you guys uh, taking applicants in or residents in the lobby at all? Sir. I was not there in my official capacity. Did you say that? Yeah, the whatever, whatever works. Uh, I just want to try to do whatever we can to help make the city move forward. Let's do it. Let's stop. It's still a North Shop, man. My house. This is just my house. Um, as we're speaking on housing and the Laurel Street address getting up about two units. Um, since those units have any other units of that um, type where residents go from um, the traditional project based housing to uh, housing that they could possibly have ownership of, and, uh, and it's, if so or not, um, how many participants that we have in that kind of program? Currently, and what's the condition for the future? We currently have approximately 10 or 12 NST homes that are eligible for like or similar sales. Uh, they are occupied. In fact, two of those 12 homes are already under mortgage. And so we're in the process now of determining the eligibility and or the desire of the current occupants to purchase. Uh, and from there, that is where we're going to revert, if you will, uh, on home ownership. Okay. So let's start. I'll call that program. That's what we're starting up. Uh, encouraging the right more residents to the home ownership. That's a great plus. Thank you. Anything else from anybody else? Mm -hmm. Well, we get something. Yeah, I was about to say we're still waiting on a time and location for the workshop. I think the location of being extremely, I mean, if we can't find something between you now, you're doing it there, the whole running conversation that needs to happen uh, with regard to our internet service, because that's all we need within the day. Commissioner Born and Mark Ray. Yeah, well, the streaming, um, but um, we can ask. Where, so, where, where do y'all want to hold it? Well, no, no, let's ask the city clerk about in terms of from a legal standpoint of holding a meeting. And having the public 
available. Do we have to have a stream? Do we have to stream? Mm -hmm. Madam Mayor, please. Hi, it's Valeria. There's no, there is no requirement for streaming. We just have to have notification that it's a public meeting and have public have access to come to the meeting. Thank you. So that's all. That's all we need. So we can have a meeting. So let's come up with a date. Come up with it. Some date. Well, I, I'm saying none of that. Then with that, with that in mind, you could have it at the house. We'll be in the home. How we're going to want to stream with the legal meeting. Have it. We'll be in there. And there's, and there's, 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 the streaming is something that the city just implemented uh, during COVID when we were, when it was allowed to have Zoom meetings. And it's something that we have just continued to provide as a service to um, the commit the to the city and our our community. So so in in the notice we could could we just say once we advertise the meeting that it will not be streamed and would that be sufficient or we don't even have to make notice. I don't think any of our notices stay at the same. Oh. Okay, well, so we just we just we just publicly notice. Right. As an informational point of view, you can say that it will not be live streamed, and then that way that will uh, certainly reduce the number of calls of City Hall asking for the access, you know, code. Okay, but then dates. Yeah. How long would you need to get your presentation? I or think that, that needs uh, as opposed to the presentation, I'm looking for a discussion and uh, a demonstration of why our group should work more closely together. The reason I ask is because we need to have whatever we need to have because we know new legislation takes first. I mean, takes place on the first of July. Okay, so we don't have a lot of time to a couple of years after the budget. Maybe we'll make ourselves a bit. Uh, no, excuse me. And you have a workshop on Friday? Oh. Strategic plan and update on our first meetings. What time? The three. Oh, Friday. Oh, that that was, yeah, that what time? <laughs> what time about three? three it was at, it was the afternoon because I think we stayed in the three mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are we saying it comes time next week? I believe we have two commissioners that are available. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can make myself available at the 15th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 What about by Zoom? Pardon? By Zoom? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, no, we yeah. have this person. The person is there. Okay. All right, no, Tuesday the 13th. Is that 13th or 14th? That's time with me. What time of day are we talking about? Uh, maybe earlier in the afternoon. No, mm -hmm. later in the afternoon. Okay. And we only say later, and I'll be completely transparent. We for the, us educators, we don't get off until five. That's twelve. Yeah, we don't have the luxury of being off over the summer. So and some of us have a business where that's close to Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. we don't shut Why down. Think I'm better. We work ten hour days. <laughs> I don't worry about uh, Friday, June sixteenth. No. No. Yeah. Very high. Because I think I y'all four days. You four days. You four days. But you're Friday. Friday, June 16th, we got a special call city. 
So what happened to 13 and 14? One of those. Uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Campbell couldn't make it on um, Wednesday, correct? I said we don't get off. So five. And we have five mm -hmm. meetings that are happening today. Already, so. so you want to meet earlier in the day? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Or the week after? That would accommodate. Thank you. Do you know as an administrator how busy we are with about I have a busy time of the year. So okay, we're not getting anywhere. And I would no say uh, okay, Friday's our bill. All any time today. Do we have a city clerk that kind of coordinating this? Yeah. yeah. Let's do that. But absent, absent this taking place before July first. Yes. Absent that occurrence, the emphatically um, the project that we're trying to achieve to help as many residents in this community as possible um, is, I think, the single largest project that our entity has ever endeavored to take upon itself. So we're looking at minimally thirty to fifty million dollars of money being pumped into the local economy. So irrespective of what we can get for a single piece, we're ready to develop it immediately and apply immediately to get this done. And so if we're not able to have the meeting when it comes up in the next city commission, please know that our success is your success and the city success, the county success. And we're looking at a lot of money being ejected from the state and federal coming to our community, to helping our contractors, retail workers, et cetera. So I, I hope that we can effectively schedule the meeting, but if not, um, you know, I pray that this is a moment that we can ask you for help for things that you have that you're not making use of, that will make great, great use out of it. Okay, so thank you. Okay, thank you. So move. Thank you.